So apologies again, because once again, we're in my yard. I wanted to uh, show what I use for Hunakaia, summer camp. Um, Hunakaia is about a week. It's a Boy Scout camp. Um, this is kind of my basic setup for a week. Sorry, my yard is messy. My yard is always messy. I do weird stuff. That is a pile of dirt over there. And apparently I'm enthused about growing weeds. Uh, weeds, not, not, not weed. Um, here's my tent. It's not really a tent, it's a tarp. Uh, so, this is what I kind of live in for six or seven days when I'm at camp. It's roomy, I like it. Uh, I do make adjustments throughout the week because you can see uh, already, you know, there's some looseness in the tarp. So I will adjust things as the uh, paracord stretches a little bit for the first couple of days. I'm tightening things up. But you know, this gets me by pretty well. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. The tarp is 1.1 uh, ounce Sil Poly that I bought from Ripstop by the Roll. And I seriously quarter-assed, quarter -assed making this tart myself about uh, three or four years ago. And you can see I made this stitch here. No, oh, why'd I go sideways or diagonal? I made this stitch here. I put on some heavier material, which I attached my tie-ons. And it is, uh, it's not pretty, but to be honest, I'm not much of a sewer. I'm probably not interested in being much of a sewer. Um, Honokai, I often use guayvi poles. Guayvi is an invasive species of uh, fruit. And so when you cut it, it grows back very fast. And, uh, you know, it doesn't really belong here. And uh, so it's, it's, it, it's kind of a no foul usage of the wood um, yeah so that is that is the basic setup right there um, I at, at Honokaia I use a cot um, actually why don't I just set that up and we're back okay so uh, this is not actually my cot this is a parts spare because per my children the real cots are all packed away nicely dad don't mess with them, please. Uh, but so you can see this has been through some hell. I think one of the Boy Scouts sat on the edge there and tore it. But this is where I put my, my cot under normal conditions. This is my uh, Tyvek sheet that I use as a footprint for my tent. And uh, take it with me for these things. I, I sometimes sleep on it. Put my pad down on it. Um... Yeah, it's pretty multitasking. It's been through some hell. And it's still in really good shape. Um, sometimes, if there's a lot of mosquitoes, I use the ridge line to uh, hang my mosquito net. Uh, I don't, the mosquito net I have right now is, is one suited for sleeping on the ground. Not one of the big ones that I have that cover the entire uh, cot. So I'm not going to set it up for this configuration. But this gets me by for a week. Uh, six nights, seven days. And, uh, yeah. A lot of rain comes down in Honokai. It gets pretty wet. Um, sometimes I angle this a bit taller, particularly if I'm using Guayvi instead of my uh, trekking poles. And that uh, works out better a little bit for the rain. I don't get any accumulation. Sometimes at night I'll wake up and there'll be a little bit of a bubble on the edges of the tarp. I'll have to empty and then tighten everything up again. But uh, yeah, that would be my thing. And uh, you know, me and right here is my little workspace. Sometimes I have a chair here and I'm just hanging out with my chair. Um, sometimes I have a Lao stove that I'll set up and cook things on or just have a little mini personal fire. Exciting times. I'll make my coffee over here, take it easy. Um, the wide open space gives me a good solid view of what's going out and going on around me. Um, I can see generally when the scouts get up and they start making their breakfast or their meals and stuff, uh, I can look over and say, yeah, they're, uh, self-feeding. I don't need to do anything. 
so good. I can just lie in here. Uh, there's not a lot of privacy. So you do have to do some uh, gymnastics to change your clothes. Um, but uh, I think that's kind of a standard thing. Yeah, not real exciting. A little bit of an add-on. Here is the bag I keep my tarp in and my, my the stakes for it. Uh, it's a used onion bag. Uh, I washed it to make sure I wouldn't have bear smell. But uh, it works pretty well. It's ultra lightweight. Um, and it breathes. So when I pack the tarp in there, it doesn't get as moldy, I think, as when if it was in an actual bag. Like a solid, like non-permeable bag. Mold is a real big issue here. Uh, again, apologies for my ugly yard. I got some breadfruit tree though. That's always nice. Um, all right, so this is the setup that I'm planning to take with me when I go to Nepal Crater in two weeks. Probably gonna take it this weekend, prototype it out a little bit, see how that goes. Um, it's a tar, it's, it's a poncho. It's my rain gear uh, with some line. I've still got my Tyvek on the bottom. It's, uh, I think just long enough. I think that's like six feet. I wish I had another foot, um, but I don't. Maybe a custom poncho, if I made one of those, would be better. Um, we'll see. I made uh, one end a little bit shorter than the other because I wanted to give an opportunity for the wire to kind of go down and not into that the hood right there. But, uh, you know, that might not have worked out quite how I thought. Uh, a lot depends on, you know, how my stakes go, what the, the ground is like. What I'm a little bit worried about is uh, not having a good enough place to put stakes down. That will suck. But that is the way it goes. Uh, the, normally, I have a North Face Stormbreak 1, which is a little one-person tent I should throw up. That is what I use if I'm going backpacking. Uh, but COVID-19 is a pain in the ass. And if we want to go camping, everybody has to stay six feet apart or more. And nobody can share a tent. So we don't have backpacking tents, like one person backpacking tents. We have a bunch of like four person tents, which are about five or six pounds and very, very bulky. Um, trying to ask the boys to go out in one of those big tents seems unfair. I mean, uh, they, they, they can't carry it. We're, it's, it's 14 miles round trip and it's just going to suck. So we're going to tarp it. I've given them each a tarp, given them each a couple of guivy poles, and they're going to go ahead and set up something similar to this, but use a real tarp. I think it's uh, six by eight, and they will probably be better off than I will be, but that's okay. That's what's important is that they are better off than I am. Uh, if I was to show up with my tent and tell the boys, oh no, you've got to be in your tarp, I feel like that would be putting a little too much on them. And uh, you can see my rope work isn't fancy. Um, I know a bunch of knots. I use them kind of randomly, probably for the wrong things half the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. If we had backpacking tents, if I could afford like, if I had a thousand bucks to buy like six or seven backpacking tents at like 120 bucks each, I would do that. But uh, I think this will be good too. And, uh, you know, summer camp, they put up shelters that are very similar to this. Um, they work out pretty well. All right, uh, signing off. Sorry, I'm going to apply my, practice my cinematography, so to speak. So I'm trying to learn how to do these videos better to make them a bit more understandable. They don't have theme music, so I'll have to hum it for you. Dun, 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 dun. Da 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 I have no idea what that's from. Holding my phone with both hands because some YouTube guy said that's what you should do. Alright. You say so, Haas. Oh, underneath the breadfruit. Underneath the breadfruit. And there is the breadfruit. And 
and there are the bananas. And somewhere in here you can't see them are about a bajillion little fire ants. Yay. All right now, hey, how about this one? Da 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 There you go. And so I'm transitioning over to the tarp, I mean, sorry, to the uh, poncho. And uh, this is what it looks like without the tarp on it. Just the line going across the ridge line held up by two trekking poles. Um, I'd add that this is all a bit of a cheat. I make the boys go out into the woods and cut guivy poles and basically build everything out of guivy. And all they get is like a tarp for summer camp. So when they're over there sleeping for their six nights, they're literally in a shelter that they built entirely on their own. And I've got all these cheats. I've got my nice tarp and my nice poles and my all my nice paracord. Um, I think if I was in a tent, it would be an unbearable cheat and it would not be fair to the boys and they'd have lower morale. But, uh, you know, when I'm out there suffering a bit, I think it helps them mentally figure it out.